All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be our next video on evolution and specifically looking at other forces of evolution that go through and play a role in speciation. Let's get through this next video. So there are going to be other ways other than natural selection that we've gone through and talked about that organisms can go through and evolve and speciate. So when we talk about natural selection, remember, this is the process whereby organisms better adapt to their environment and tend to survive and produce more offspring. And it's really survival of the fittest organism within a population. But there are several other ways that this can go through and occur. We can have mutations that are going to go through and introduce new alleles into the population. And a mutation is the changing of the structure of a gene resulting in a variant form that may be transmitted to subsequent generations. This is really caused by altering the base pairs within the DNA. When we think about mutations, we can kind of think about mutations and natural selection working hand in hand. Now, when we talk about gene flow, gene flow is when individuals move in or out of a population and cause change to the genes within the environment. And then genetic drift is going to be things that go through and randomly affect the allele frequencies within the population. So when we talk about gene flow and genetic drift, the bottleneck and the founder effect that you know, subsequently follow this, these are more random events. And we can consider mutations random, but when we talk about speciation between organisms, really what we're talking about with mutations and gene flow and genetic drift is random things that are going through and occurring that allow for those species to go through and evolve. So this is going to be what we're delving into next, and it's going to be in two parts. So let's go through and look at what a mutation is. Well, a mutation is a change in the nucleotide sequence in the DNA, and it creates new genetic variation in a gene pool, and it's how alleles are going to go through and first arise. So what we're going to see is a very specific change amongst species and organisms, assuming that that allele is beneficial for the population. So let's say we just have regular squirrels, and these squirrels have the ability to go through and climb the trees, and they've gone through and they've consumed all of the acorns in this tree on the left. Well, the squirrel's going to try to go through and jump to this tree on the right, but it's not going to be able to go through and make it because it doesn't have the ability to jump that far and has no wing systems. Well, how do organisms like flying squirrels go through and evolve, and how do we see the rise of these flying squirrels? Well, there's going to be a change in the nucleotide sequence somewhere along this squirrel. And what this is going to do is create protein and subsequent cascade effects that are going to go through and cause a phenotype that we see within our squirrels that cause these flaps that we see in these flying squirrels. And as a result, what these flying squirrels are going to be able to do is be able to move to that next tree and go through and collect the acorns in an easier fashion compared to the other squirrels. So really when we're talking about mutations, it's going to be a random event that's going to change a nucleotide sequence on these animals. However, it's going to work with natural selection because if this allele is beneficial, it's going to go through and it's going to allow those organisms to go through and propagate within that population. Now, not all mutations are going to be beneficial and the ones that are not are going to be removed from the gene pool. They're gonna not be selected for. So when we think about mutations, it's not necessarily, it's a random change in event in alleles, but it's not going to go and randomly affect the overall population. Natural selection is still going to play a role in selecting for which mutation is going to be beneficial to that population. So this mutation is going to introduce this new allele into the pool, and if the allele is favorable, it's going to remain. Okay, in order to understand gene flow, let's look at the following example before we go through the definition. So we have this environment and we have two different birds on either side. So we have these orange and black birds on one side, and then we have these pink and tan birds on the other side. Now we're going to assume that this is kind of a homogeneous uh, population here with exactly the same um, sets of alleles per bird. So the birds on the left, they all have two dominant alleles, and the birds on the right, they have the two recessive alleles. So dominant is going to code for orange, recessive will code for pink, if we're looking at this, we have a geographic barrier. Now you're probably asking yourself, well, how is this river going to be a geographic barrier that's going to prevent these birds and these two populations from going through and mating? Well, there's going to be this shark in the river with laser beam eyes. Yes, I know, it's a little bit uh, far-fetched here, but uh, please bear with me. And this is going to prevent these two bird populations from coming in contact and going through and reproducing. 
Now, it's important to note that these birds are two separate populations, but they are the same species, so they have the ability to go through and reproduce. The phenotypic differences that we see, the orange and the pink, are a result of the presence and absence of this dominant allele. So as we look at this example, let's look at the allele pool here. If we look at this pool, we're going to see that there are going to be eight total dominant large alleles here. They're code for the orange birds. So this allele pool only has the dominant alleles here. So if we do the calculations here, we're going to see for the large dominant allele, we have eight out of eight, a 1.0, and then the small lowercase recessive allele here, we have a zero out of eight or a zero. And if we do the allele frequency and allele pool for the pink birds here, well, we can see if we put all the alleles in the allele pool, and remember these two individual sets of birds are not going through and reproducing, but have the capability to reproduce, uh, we can see the allele pool here and the allele frequency calculations for these subsequent two sets of birds here. So we can see for the dominant allele, there are zero, and then we have eight out of eight for the recessive allele. Now what's going to happen is, is one of these birds is somehow going to get through the miraculous shark lasers that go through and exist in this river. And what this is going to have is a major effect on the allele poles. So if we look at these two lowercase or recessive alleles, well now they've moved over to this set of birds on the left here. And what we can see is, is we're still going to have zero out of six or zero percent of the alleles on the allele pool on the right consist of the dominant alleles. And again, we still have a 1.0 or 100 percent of the alleles are recessive for that bird set on the right. So this allele frequency and the overall allele frequency of this population is going to remain unchanged. However, we're going to see a change in the allele frequency for this population on the left. Instead of having the total eight out of eight, uh, dominant alleles, what we're going to see is we now have 8 out of 10 because of the addition of these two recessive alleles. And now we have 2 out of 10, and this changes our math here. So we can see for the recessive, we have a 0 0.2 and a 0 0.8 for the dominant alleles. So what this has done is it's caused an allele frequency change and change the allele pool. And when this bird goes through and mates with the other birds on this other side of the river, this is going to have an effect on that population. So the allele frequency of this population has now changed and this can potentially and will cause change to that population with the addition of these two new alleles. So when we talk about gene flow, gene flow is when individuals either move in or out of a population. And in our example that we just went through and looked at, well, moving out of the population didn't necessarily go through and affect those birds. And we'll talk about how that might have an effect when we talk about genetic drift, but it certainly had an effect for that population on the left. So let's look at this first scenario because gene flow is going to depend upon our rate. So we have population one here and they have all of these yellow chips which represent the allele pool. And then we have population two. And again, we're going to assume that they are the same species and have the ability to reproduce, but you know maybe they're separated by a barrier. Now, an individual from population two is going to slowly go through and exchange some of these alleles. Maybe this is a recessive allele that didn't exist within population one. And what this is going to do is it's going to have an effect on population one. It's going to change the allele frequency. However, that allele moved very slowly. Now, if we compare this to alleles moving very quickly over to population one, well, it's going to affect how fast that population evolves. The slower, and this is a general rule of thumb, that the alleles move or immigration and emigration occur, the slower evolution occurs. And then the faster we move those alleles from one population to the next, or the faster we lose the alleles, well, the faster it's going to go through and evolve. So the rate of immigration and emigration have an effect on how fast that population is going to evolve. And it's certainly going to have an effect on the allele frequency. So if we look at this tree of life here, we can see that a horizontal line is going to show any place in where gene flow allowed for genetic variation to pass between the various populations of organisms. And it is through this horizontal gene flow that eukaryotes gained the pathways for both mitochondria and plastids, such as chloroplasts here. So if we look at the image here, what we can see is any of these kind of horizontal lines, well, this is where gene flow went through and occurred. And again, it's going to have a major effect on the tree of life because this horizontal gene flow allowed for the acquisition of these plastids and mitochondria. So these organelles that we see within cells, within eukaryotic cells specifically. So because of gene flow, we can see that this has a major impact on the tree of life and how organisms evolve overall. All right, so this is gonna be the end of the video. And did you guys learn? Well, did you learn a couple of things? Did you guys go through and learn about the three other types of evolution other than natural selection? 
We really only specifically talked about two today. Those are going to be mutations in gene flow. And in our part two, we're going to talk about genetic drift. And then lastly, did you learn about how gene flow is affected by rate? This is going to be the end of the video. I will see you all in class tomorrow.